Welcome back to MediClass. Today we shall learn about guided tissue regeneration. The aim of periodontal therapy is to prevent further attachment loss and to predictably restore the periodontal supporting structures which are lost due to disease or trauma. The role of conventional non-surgical therapy and periodontal flap surgery in the treatment of periodontal disease has been established. They help in halting the disease progression. However, it results in a poor aesthetics in the anterior dentition and also leaves residual pockets inaccessible to efficient cleaning. This leaves the tooth in a negative long-term prognosis. To minimize these complications, periodontal regenerative procedures were introduced that restore the lost periodontal tissues. So periodontal regeneration aims to reform the epithelial seal, the deposition of new acellular extrinsic fiber cementum, the insertion of functionally oriented connective tissue fibers into the root surface and restoration of the alveolar bone height. Melcher introduced the concept of compartmentalization. According to him, the type of cell that populate the wound area will determine the nature of the attachment. So, if the gingival epithelial cells arrive first at the site, it will lead to a long junction epithelium formation. If the connective tissue cell reaches to the site, it will lead to root resorption. Likewise, if the bone cell reaches the site first, it will result in ankylosis without the existing periodontal ligament. But when the periodontal cell reaches the site, it leads to periodontal regeneration with restoration of the fibrous attachment, cementum formation, and the alveolar bone as the periodontal ligament contains the mesenchymal cells. With this concept, guided tissue regeneration was introduced. It prevents the apical migration of the gingival, epithelial and the connective tissue cells and it maintains a wound space into which selective population of cells can occur. Guided tissue regeneration is a process that attempts to regenerate lost periodontal structures through differential tissue responses. In this image you can see that a guided tissue regeneration membrane is placed between the gingival tissues and the bone. This membrane separates the gingival epithelial and connective tissue cells from reaching the site of denuded area. Membrane allows only the periodontal ligament and alveolar bone cells to populate in the zone. So what is the basis of guided tissue regeneration? According to the research by Nyman and colleagues, they suggested that periodontal ligament and perivascular cells have the potential to regenerate the attachment apparatus of the tooth. So the concept of GTR involves guided techniques that utilize barrier membranes that can facilitate the migration of bone cells and the periodontal ligament cells to the defect areas and prevents the gingival epithelial and connective tissue cells from penetrating the membrane. So barrier membranes not only allow the periodontal ligament cells to repopulate the previously deceased tooth but they also provide a space for ingrowth of periodontal ligament tissue cells. It is important to note that the membranes are intended to perform their functions for 6 to 8 weeks after placement. So what are the indications of guided tissue regeneration? It can be used to treat 2 and 3 wall infrabony defects, circumferential defects around spiral pockets, alveolar ridge augmentation, repair of epistectomy defect, osseous fill around immediate implants, repair of osseous defect associated with failing implants, treatment of gingival recession, and maxillary sinus perforation following an extraction. Conditions where GTR cannot be used is class 3 furcations, premolar furcations that are placed too apically, horizontal bone loss, one wall in for bony defects, however certain studies using non-resorbable membranes have given limited results, multiple adjacent defects, and inadequate width of attached gingiva. So what are the materials used for guided tissue regeneration? These are basically GTR membranes and they can either be non-resorbable or biodegradable or resorbable. The biodegradable membranes get degraded by the enzymes present in the body. The source can either be natural or synthetic. Among the non-resorbable membranes are the methyl cellulose acetate and the expanded polytetrafluoroethylene. Among the resorbable ones are the collagen, calcium sulfate and other synthetic polymers like polylactic acid, polyglycolic acid and polylactate. 
PTFE is one of the most important non resorbable membranes that is used in periodontics. It is a synthetic biocompatible polymer. It is composed of an inner cell occlusive area and outer cell adherent region. It has its application in GTR because it can selectively exclude migration of epithelial and gingival connective tissue cells. It can integrate with the bone and connective tissue margin of the periodontal defect. It has adequate stiffness to allow creation and maintenance of a secluded wound space. It is flexible enough to be adapted around a defect. It is available in different configurations and sizes. It is available as either titanium reinforced or non reinforced material. It is indicated in non supportive one wall defect or ridge augmentation cases. Collagen membrane is one of the important membranes among the resorbable membranes. It is obtained from the bovine and porcine and consists of type 1 collagen. It is indicated in the treatment of 2 and 3 wall defects and grade 2 furcation involvement. It has its application in GTR as it is a chemotactic and stimulates proliferation of fibroblasts. It acts as a barrier for migrating epithelial cells, provides hemostasis, serves as a scaffold wherein vascular and tissue in growth can occur. It is easily shaped and readily adaptable. It is resorbed by enzymatic activity of the macrophages and the neutrophils. So there are certain requirements of the guided tissue regeneration membrane. These are biocompatibility, space maintenance, tissue integrity, cell occlusiveness, rigidity and degradability. There are certain limitations of both the non-resorbable and the resorbable membranes. The non-resorbable membranes can cause early exposure to the oral environment leading to infection and they need to be removed after 6 to 8 weeks in a second surgical procedure. The resorbable membranes however can undergo early degradation than the time they are required to stay in the mouth and cause epithelial downgrowth. The clinical applications of GTR are treatment of vocation lesions, intrabony defects and gingival recession. Class 2 mandibular and maxillary vocation can be treated successfully. In this image you can see there is bone loss with the exposure of the vocation area. After debridement a GTR membrane is placed which is sutured with a coronally positioned flap. Post healing you can see the vocation area is almost completely filled. In a class 2 mandibular vocation it can give horizontal clinical attachment gain and it allows for transformation of a class 2 vocation into a maintainable class 1 vocation. In a class 2 maxillary vocation, GTR is of limited value. It provides inconsistent probing depth reduction and no additional clinical attachment gain. In class 3 vocation, there is only occasional success and the results are unpredictable. In case of intra bony defects, greater probing depth reduction is achieved and clinical attachment gain are seen. These procedures are highly predictable. In this image, you can see an intra bony defect is completely debrided. A guided tissue regeneration membrane is adapted onto the defect and sutured properly, after which a coronally advanced flap is closed. There are certain factors that can affect the outcome of the guided tissue regeneration procedure. These are either patient related or site related. Smoking, poor plug control, residual periodontal pockets and uncontrolled diabetes can negatively affect the success of GTR. Cervical enamel projections, enamel perns, gingival thickness less than 1 mm and tooth mobility can again negatively affect the results of GTR. Coming to the surgical technique of guided tissue regeneration. First is the flap placement which involves incision. Incision can either be intracircular, simplified papilla preservation if the interproximal space is more than 2 mm, modified papilla preservation flap if the interproximal space is less than 2 mm and vertical releasing incision when required. This is followed by flap elevation which involves a full thickness flap from the margin towards the mucogingival junction and a partial thickness flap beyond the mucogingival junction. The final position of flap will cover the entire membrane. Suturing involves modified mattress suture. The second step is the defect debridement. The defect is completely debrided to remove all the granulation tissue. Scaling and root painting using hand ultrasonic and rotary instruments is performed. 
and odontoplasty if needed. The next step involves root surface preparation. This is achieved through citric acid or tetracycline hydrochloride. This removes the smear layer from the root surface and detoxifies the root surface from the bacterial toxin. It also demineralizes the root surface to expose dentine collagen matrix. This is followed by barrier placement. The barrier membrane is sutured around the neck of the tooth in a tent like fashion. The entire defect and at least 2 to 3 mm of the surrounding alveolar bone is completely covered. There are certain complications associated with GTR. These include membrane exposure, bleeding, swelling, hematoma, erythema, suppuration, sloughing or perforation of the flap, membrane exfoliation, and post operative pain. So to summarize, guided tissue regeneration procedure attempts to regenerate lost periodontal structures through differential tissue response. Barrier membranes allow only the periodontal ligament cells to repopulate the previously diseased root surface. It is used to treat narrow and deep periodontal intrabony defects and class 2 fecation defects. GTR treatment helps in greater probing depth reduction and clinical attachment gains. Incorporation of growth and differentiation factors in the GTR treatment of periodontal defects will favor improved clinical results. You can find the link to MCQs for this topic in the description of the video. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you liked it and if you did, please subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video. Till then, stay healthy and have an amazing week.